Hello and welcome to your Discover Scuba Diving Experience. My name is Danelle and I will be your instructor leading you through this experience. The goal today is for you to uncover some of the unknowns in regard to scuba diving so that you may have a better understanding when diving into the ocean. So when you're ready, let's get started. Today, we will be covering five important scuba diving topics. They are your equipment, the number one rule of diving, equalizing, hand signals, and skill practice. But first, let's have a quick look at what to expect on the day. We will meet at the dive center to size you into scuba gear, and from there, head off to our dive site. I will be assembling your equipment for you, so you can focus on the excitement that lies ahead. In shallow water, we will go through skills demonstration and practice, and once you feel that you are ready, we will explore the dive site together. The dive will end once you are low on air, or when you signal that you're cold. Keep in mind that throughout the entire in-water activity, you shall be under direct instructor supervision. Please listen to your instructor, as we are only trying to help you have a safe and enjoyable experience. Take note that this is not a training course, and you will not be qualified to dive without a scuba diving professional present. All right, so let's start off with what is your equipment. Regulators enable you to breathe compressed air from your scuba tank while underwater. The BCD holds the tank on your back and lets you control your buoyancy. The SPG gauge displays how much air you have in your tank. Mask and fins help you see clearly and move swiftly in the water. A metal cylinder that's filled with compressed air for you to breathe. The wetsuit, gloves and boots are designed to keep you warm and toasty on your dive. Great, so now that we know all the different parts that make up your equipment, it's time to move on to the next section. The number one rule is to never hold your breath while scuba diving. Let's watch the video together to find out why. If you think about it, your lungs are like balloons. When you breathe in, your lungs inflate. And when you breathe out, your lung deflates. So, what would happen if you hold your breath while scuba diving? Well, if you hold your breath while descending, your lungs will become smaller, creating dense pressure inside your full lungs. And if you held your breath as you ascended, the air in your lung would increase in size. But because you took a breath at depth, the air will expand greater than the volume that your lungs can withstand, which can lead to a serious lung overexpansion injury. This is why the number one rule of scuba diving is to never, ever hold your breath. Remember, it's best to breathe continuously throughout your dive. Now, let's move on to the next topic. Equalizing. If you have ever flown in a plane or ever driven down a mountain pass, you would have felt as if your ears were blocked and possibly some slight discomfort. But why does this happen and how does equalizing our ears fix the problem? Let's have a look inside our ears to see what is happening behind the scenes. Why do we need to equalize? Well, to answer this question, we need to understand what is happening inside our ears when we submerge ourselves underwater. This is what it looks like inside your ear. When the water floods into our ears, it travels through the outer ear until it is stopped by the eardrum. The station tube runs from your sinuses up into your middle ear, an airspace behind your eardrum. When you dive deeper, the pressure of the water pressing against your eardrum increases and forces the eardrum to flex inward, causing discomfort. If you do not equalize, this can lead to pain and eventually result in an injury called barotrauma. When you equalize your ears, you blow air from your sinuses up the station tube and into the middle ear. This allows the eardrum to return to normal, as the air pressure within the ear is equal to the water pressure surrounding it, and therefore alleviating the discomfort. So how do we go about equalizing our ears? The most common technique is to hold your nose and gently blow against pinched nostrils. While doing this, you may also wiggle your jaw. Although, keep in mind, you will have a regulator in your mouth and swallowing also helps. Remember, it's important to equalize early and often as you descend, before your ears start to hurt. 
If you can't equalize, it's best to ascend a meter before trying again. Once you've equalized, you can signal to your instructor and continue your way to the bottom. Awesome, now that we know how to descend safely underwater, let's find out how scuba divers communicate to each other with the use of hand signals. In diving, we have standardized hand signals. This is so it's not always a game of charades when we try and communicate something underwater. The hand signal you are going to be using the most is OK, which can be used as both a question and an answer. It's also used to acknowledge that you have seen what your buddy or instructor is pointing out. Using the signal at the surface is easier to see from a distance. If you have a problem underwater, you can signal something is wrong and then point to where the problem lies. Your instructor will signal go up at the end of your dive and go down once you've equalized your ears. If you are having trouble with equalizing, you can signal this to your instructor. And similarly, your instructor can ask if you have equalized by showing the same. You may be told to stop what you're doing while underwater. This one is often a reaction to the cold and is intuitive to understand. The look signal is often followed by pointing in the desired direction, which will be used during skill demonstration to express look at me or watch me. As your instructor, we are responsible for watching your air gauge, although you're welcome to check it too. If we notice that you're landing row on air, which is about 50 bar, then I'll signal to you like this. In the unlikely event that you ever find yourself running out of air, which should never happen as we're only diving to 8 meters and I'll be watching you guys very closely, then a big gesture like this is how we signal this to our instructor. Now, let's take a look at some of the scuba diving skills we will be practicing. Since we've already discussed why equalizing is important, let's see how it works with a video demonstration. Our second skill, regulator recovery, is for when you take your regulator out of your mouth or if something by accident knocks it out of yours so that you can easily recover it and clear your regulator and continue breathing normally. The third skill, Mask Clear, enables you to clear the water that enters your mask without having to return to the surface every time it leaks. This doesn't happen as a result of poor fitting mask, but because scuba divers are always smiling, creating a crease in the silicone that seals the mask to your face, leaking in little droplets of water.
Well done. Now you know more about scuba diving. You know what a regulator and BCD are, why you should never hold your breath underwater, why we need to equalize our ears, how to signal if something is wrong, and you've seen someone do a mask clear. So when the day comes for your experience, you will feel less nervous knowing that you have heard and seen it all before. I absolutely can't wait to explore the underwater world together so that you may discover the magic hidden beneath the waves. After your experience, you might find yourself wondering, but what's next? If it is the case, please feel free to chat to me about completing your Paddy Open Water Diving Course, which enables you to dive anywhere in the world up to a depth of 18 meters. But for now, get excited, and I'll be seeing you very soon.